Hello everyone, Moon Envoy here, and we are back with part 16 of my Dragon Age Origins Let's Play with Davia the Dwarven Commoner. When we last left off, we were helping the village of Redcliffe prepare for a zombie infestation. Who would have thought there would be zombies in a fantasy game about Darkspawn? Apparently Darkspawn are not the only threat we have to deal with. So, so far we got the smith back up and running and fixing the militia's equipment. We recruited a dwarven mercenary without propositioning him, which was an option that we definitely did not take. And we found the young lady in the Chantry's younger brother and got a sword out of that deal which I currently have equipped. So let's check back in with Murdoch. The repairs are underway surprisingly quickly, considering how drunk Owen is. We may just make it. All right, so how is morale? The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Good to hear. Is there anything else? Alright, looks like all I really need is to talk to Sir Perth. You'll find him and his men at the mill by the bridge, to the north. I have a good feeling about tonight. I'm glad we went from, oh my god, everybody's going to die, to I have a good feeling. That's always good. So it looks like Sir Perth is off that way. But I haven't been up over here yet, so let's check out what's up here. Let's see, what building is this? Can I go into it? Yes, and it is the tavern! Taverns are always nice to visit. Should get a bit of gossip going. <coughs> Let's see. Oh, we have some of the militia over here. What are you guys doing? That's mighty kind of you to help us. We thought nobody would come to our aid. You sound drunk. I can't believe Lloyd won't even give us some free ale. A time like this, and all he thinks about is turning a profit. Did you expect any different? That bastard's always been cheaper than an antique from the hall. Here we are defending the village, and he don't even have the decency to help us out. Okay. Do you really want to be drunk for the battle? I was drunk for the last two fights, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You don't if you actually fought those sound drunk, things, you'd know. Lloyd is charging us for coin we don't even got anymore. Nobody's working right now. We're all just trying to survive. Ah, uh, what difference does it make? He won't care. Okay, so apparently I have a quest to get money for the militia. What's this graffiti? A note to the diners. All right. You're Lloyd. The militia are complaining that you aren't giving them free ale. What are you going to do about Hello it? Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travelers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Let's see. And what do you mean by that? Oh, you know, evil creatures, impending doom, civil war, and the Earl's dead in the castle. Makes you thirsty, don't it? You are awfully so, pessimistic. So, what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Hey, are you charging the militia for ale? Why shouldn't I? They may not have much coin, but I'm not giving it away for free. Why not? Their money won't help you if you're dead. Hey, there's no need for that kind of talk. That's murder. Oh, I'm, I'm actually threatening him. Okay. Would anyone miss you? Hey, look, see, 80 silvers. I could pay you to uh, protect me. There's no need for any unpleasantness. Uh, I'd prefer it if you joined the militia. But, but I... Oh, all right. But all of this better be here when I get back. I don't want the place drunk out from under me. 
blasted bloody. Okay, so I actually managed to get that to work even though I didn't use the persuade option. I thought I was just trying to make him feel I see you got that bastard to Lloyd to join the militia. I it's about time you did something to help to out. Him. I guess this puts me in charge. <laughs> Poor Lloyd will have an apoplexy just thinking about it, eh? Okay, so if you're in charge, could you serve the militia ale for free? <laughs> Lloyd wouldn't care much for that. It's an excellent idea. You hear that, boys? Drinks for the militia are on the house. Ha! <laughs> you're the best, darling. You just keep us all safe, boys. And stay alive. Um, all right. Shouldn't you be at the Chantry? When I lock up the tavern later on, I will be. Are you... fighting tonight? Yes. That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. All right. Oh, apparently there's an elf in the corner. What do you know about the elf in the corner? Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. All right, then. I will go deal Keep with Keep safe and come back any time. I won't lock up until near sundown. All right. Hey, creepy elf in the corner. Not looking for company. Um, shouldn't you be with the militia? Why? I don't live here. All right, then what are you doing here? Just waiting until I can leave again. Here, you're Berwick. What? How did you know that? Uh, well, that's my name. Why? You said you were waiting for your brother. My what? Oh, yes. He was supposed to meet me here. And then I got stuck here when monsters from the castle attacked. Why don't I believe you? Then why aren't you helping to fight? I was told I didn't have to. I stay in the Chantry at night, and I come here to... to be alone, that's all. Look, you're very pretty and all, but I was told to... Uh, just leave me alone. You think I'm pretty? That's nice. And just what exactly were you told to do? Nothing. Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. Oh, and how do you know I'm a Grey Warden? Obviously you're hiding something, so just be honest with me now. If I... but I never... Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck, same as you, I swear. Wait, who are they? Who hired you to do this? A tall fellow. I forget his name. He uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man, Terran Loghain's right hand. So I didn't do Ooh, anything wrong. I already wrong. don't like you, thanks for that. And just what were you supposed to watch the castle for? Just to report any changes, honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. Okay, so how do I know you're telling me the truth? Here, this is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it. Do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. Hey, I think you should be helping to defend Redcliffe tonight. You obviously caused this village a lot of trouble. It's only proper that you help out in response. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. You're welcome. Now get out there. And we got a letter that we should be able to use as evidence against Terran Loghain, hopefully, in the future. What can I get you? Um, let me see. Do you have supplies? Fair enough. Let me see what Lloyd stored in the back. You can help yourself. Okay. Let's see, I can get rid of one of these. Why is it not... Oh, because this is not buying and selling. I'm just stealing stuff with the owner's approval. I already have wine. Don't need more wine. 
Okay, I got some more health poultices and injury kits because something tells me I'm going to need those. And now we're going to go off to see Sir Perth because that seems to be the only one we still need to talk to before we are ready to fight the zombie horde. Oh, down the hill. Cross the bridge. Is what they say your mother is Glenna, oh. the witch of the Kakari Wilds. They also say that washing your feet in winter makes you catch cold in the head, but we all know that is not true. But sometimes they are right. And they are right in this. You know the stories about. Of course. You think my mother would let me go without telling me all the stories of her youth? My mother told me stories too. She was the one who kindled my love of the old tales and legends. Hmm. My mother's stories curdled my blood and haunted my dreams. No little girl wants to hear about the wilder men her mother took to her bed, using them till they were spent, then killing them. No little girl wants to be told that this is also expected of her once she comes of age. I... Oh, uh, I see. No, you don't. You really don't. Oh, poor Liliana Morgan is tainting her innocent mind. I would tell Morgan to be nice, but honestly, that would probably just encourage her. Ah, and you must be Sir Perth. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit, I am unfamiliar with addressing a dwarf of your station. I do not wish to be rude. Uh, just call me by my name. As you wish, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now, my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle. Or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, well. With a Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. Um, let's see. Have you considered using the oil in the village store? No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much, exactly? Uh, enough to set many monsters aflame. Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? Let's see, is there anything else I can do for you? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. Alright, so it sounds like this that is my last my task here. my heart to hear it. Alright. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over Off you. I go to see Mother Hannah in the Chantry. Get holy protection for the knights. I have no idea what Holy Protection refers to, but I'm assuming the Revered Mother will know what he's talking about. That or Liliana can help fill me in. Okay, guys, please don't shoot me. As I run right in front of the archers. I am supposed to talk to the mother here. Mother Hannah. You are of dwarven blood and a stranger amongst us, yet you defend a home that is not your own. We are grateful for that. Um, I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth and the Maker will smile upon you. Thank you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. How awful this must be for you all. 
Is this everyone who's left? All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? I just want to point out, I know we have the Arl's Knights and the Militia, but I thought all Chantries had Templars to protect them. Where are the Templars for this Chantry? Unless, of course, all of the Templars are already dead. In which case, that kind of sucks. Alright, Sir Perth needs holy protection. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. What do you mean? Sir Perth believes that I can protect them against these creatures, a shield only the Maker can provide, and that I withhold this power. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you Alistair know. has a point. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. Yeah, but if they think it helps them, you know, placebo effect and all that. I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Thank you for your help. Oh, it looks like we should also confer with Caitlin. Bevan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. You're welcome. Uh, about the sword I found in your home. Bevan told me about Grandfather's sword. So you have it then? I suppose it won't go to waste, at least. Um... I'll return it after the battle, since it belongs to your family. Use it well. If we survive, I'll gladly take it back. Thank you again for Bevan. With my mother gone... Well, I'm just glad he's safe. I, I can't thank you enough. Just stay safe. The Maker sent you. I didn't you. save you just I so just you could immediately it. die. Thank you again. All right, off we go. And once again, we managed to get a little bit of approval from Liliana. She seems to give her approval in small amounts every time we do a good deed. Which makes the good deeds all the more worthwhile, even if I would have done them anyway. After all, it's nice having a pretty lady approve of us. Alright, up we go! Off to deliver the amulet to Sir Perth. Nobody had any conversations for that time across the bridge. Because going across bridges is apparently the cue for our companions to start sharing. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Um, you said you wanted holy protection. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Um, Mother Hannah has some holy amulets. Would those do? Must we do this? The faith that will protect these men must come from their heart, surely. If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. Um, I'm glad I could help. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Alright. Carry on. As you wish, Grey Warden. I think we need to smooth Make things over for Liliana, because I think we just earned some disapproval. Oh goodness, Liliana is not happy. Liliana! Let me make this right. Yes? Um, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Um, you are a traveling minstrel. Do you have any tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Um, do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one, told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. 
Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Um, Flemeth, Morgan's mother, you mean. Uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon-touched, who dwells in the mists. Um... She didn't really introduce herself like that. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth was, Flemeth was once beautiful? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of High Ever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Ooh, a love triangle! Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyever, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The loss of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Okay. Well, apparently that is a tale of Morgan's mother. I also have to say, I love how if you're ever going to imprison a beautiful woman, it's always up in a tower. Why always up in a tower? Well, we got a little bit of approval for listening to Liliana's story. Not enough to make up for... Apparently, I'm gonna assume we were blaspheming. That's yes, why yes. she yes, got so upset lovely. with us. Let us soak in the vista before the massacre begins. All right, so... I think we're ready for the zombie horde. Let's just quick save the game. Just to make sure that if things do go awry, we can come back and uh, maybe prepare a Mother bit more Hannah's before we start have greatly fighting bolstered the horde. My men's confidence. You can have armed us with any better than our faith in the Maker. Alright, I'm ready to make my stand here. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Nope, I'm ready now. Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all. Alright, let's do this. Let's see how well Grey Wardens do against an army of zombies. The undead. Coming to life. Not sure how much that's different from Darkspawn. Hopefully they are killable. That's one thing about Darkspawn. Darkspawn do die. 
Ooh, the village looks kind of creepy at night. Oh, and the ominous fog rises. They're coming. Get into the chantry. Get to your positions. Make ready. Militia, you're not the ones who are supposed to be running. You know that, right? even get to the rest of it's time them. men all right here come the zombies
Arrives and we survive oh, the night. Survived. We are victorious. Yay! And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly, the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Um, there's still much more to do. I was happy to defend the village. Discussing the reward? Yes, you're welcome. I was happy to defend the village. Let us Praise bow me, our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Now they walk with he who is their maker. Long may they know the peace of his love. Uh, may their ancestors give them welcome. With the maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary, and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. That went very well. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. Oh, good grief. Don't I get a chance to catch my breath? Oh, I get a level up. Seriously, let me catch my breath. Okay, give myself some more dexterity. And some more cunning. Ooh, master coercion! Nobody will resist my powers of persuasion. And getting that so early means basically any attempt at persuasion I do will probably be victorious. Alright. I'm still primarily doing a... Uh... Fighting with dual wield. Not sure yet if I'm ready to switch over to long-range weapons might also be worth upgrading my lockpicking skills because I kind of failed at both of my attempts to lockpick doors in this area so let's go ahead and give upgrade my lockpicking skills because I'm doing pretty well on my regular attacks as was evidenced by how well that battle went so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode as we faced off against the zombie horde. Uh, if you like this episode, don't forget to check out the rest of my playlist to see what Davia has been doing prior to this episode. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you again for watching. Bye-bye!